you doing today? Good morning, Mr. Wawara. How are you? I'm wonderful. I had uh, two delicious blueberry muffins that I made myself. What? For breakfast. Like mix? So, a mix? Or like batter? No, no. You made but it? Yeah, like- yep. Make all, put in all the ingredients separately. Fold in the blueberries. I made the little cinnamon streusel topping. Uh, so it's got that extra sweet, buttery goodness on the top. Wow, <laughs> look at you. What time yes. did you get up there, Mary Farmer boy? Like um, actually, in the morning? I got up probably about 6.30. Not on purpose, that's just when I happened to wake up. My alarm was set for 7, so I got up before that. Okay. Um, I did have to take out the trash cans because it's garbage day over here in Yorkville. Um, and I didn't want to leave them out last night with all the rain, and then it just gets worse. Right. Especially if it's bad and then they tip over and that's a whole different thing. And the raccoons or the coyotes come and it's just not pleasant. <laughs> or the Sasquatch. I mean, you don't know what you have in Iowa. We have all sorts of creatures. Out here. <laughs> Actually, we have um, in my driveway, we've got a basketball hoop out there, which we don't use very much right now. <laughs> and um, it's on a slant. It is on a little bit of a slant driveway. So not, it's not horrible, but you can like a certain spot of the driveway. You're like, wow, this shot's totally easy. And the other spot, you're like, this just feels like it's forever. <laughs> Yeah, I have the same problem. So it's yeah, because okay. you're down like an extra three feet at that point. Right. Uh, but we can't use the basketball hoop right now because at the, you know, you got the hoop and then those the little like rectangular piece that connects it to the backboard. On right. that rectangular piece, there's a bird's nest there. So some birds built a nest and there's baby birds in the nest right now. So basketball would not be a very good idea. I, I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> <laughs> I swish every one of them. Won't even bother. <laughs> They wouldn't even notice. They would just wouldn't even, right through it. Like, what, what is that swish sound? It's like the wind. Right. The, the yeah, snap um, of the net. I'm not quite as skilled as you, Mr. File. On occasion, <laughs> what, like once every 32 shots or something like that, okay. I hit like the backboard or the rim or something. That might disturb them. You know, well, most of the time, yes. Total swish. Since you've been living in, in Iowa, you've only taken 32 shots on that basketball hoop because you're busy doing everything else. <laughs> so it's like one a day. <laughs> But yeah, it's fine. We got we to gotta run the farm somehow. <laughs> um, usually, I consider myself to be a dandelion farmer. And, um, oh, yes. I do, I do quite well with the dandelions. But uh, the past couple of years, actually, we, we've tried on and off for our lawn. We've tried, like, taking care of it ourselves and putting mm-hmm. on the fertilizer and the weed and feed and right. all that stuff. And then other years, we've used a lawn service just for the fertilizer. Like, I'll still mow the lawn. You know, right. But for the fertilizer stuff. Um, the years that they do it were pretty good. The years uh-huh. that I do it, dandelions galore. Right. Um, because uh, I don't know what magical chemicals that they're using, but good they ones. are effective. They're using, cause I, I do that as well. Um, every like two years I'll be like, Oh my gosh, I don't want to do it this year. So I'll just call and have somebody do it and not mow it. Just come down and spray everything. And whatever chemicals they're using is going to kill the, all the bad stuff. So that's fine. However, my neighbor, um, he used the Scott's all, he used literally the Scott's step four step thing. Okay, his yeah. lawn, his lawn was awesome all the time. But cause when I talked to him one day about it, he's like, you, you need to do, if you do it, you got to do those steps. You do it. It'll look like this. He goes, if you don't, it's like, if you do it haphazardly or whatever, he goes, it won't work. So but those I don't bags know if I've so ever expensive. done. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever done like all of those steps, so that could be part right. of my problem as well. Um, but then when you look at, yes, how expensive some of that is, and then you start to compare. Well, is it really that much more to have somebody else come and spray it? Because if I notice weeds, I just call them up again and just say, "Look, there's still some more weeds. They will come back mm-hmm. and they will respray." Yeah. Versus me having to go like buy another bag of chemical, make sure like, okay, can I, is it going to rain in the next three days? Because if it is, <laughs> then I can't put this down. Right. But then or you need to put, put it down, down and then you and, need to have it rain. Yes. <laughs> so it's, it's just easier this way. And, you know, again, I don't, I don't mind doing other yard work, you know, like in the flower beds, we'll pull the weeds out of there. I don't mind doing the mowing and the trimming and the edging. I just don't want any weeds. Cause right. we, out here in Iowa, my my uh, <laughs> my backyard backs up to a giant field of weeds. Right. So it's already a difficult battle. If I had other houses behind me, like if it was my house and we were just surrounded by other houses, 
it would probably be a lot easier. It would be. But it's my house and miles of field and farmland. Yeah, that's called Iowa. Plen- plenty of wind <laughs> to bring all the seeds. The first couple of years we were out here, we actually would have like tumbleweeds blow through. Um, but then it bu- got built up enough where we don't see the tumbleweeds anymore. Right, right. But, uh, but it was kind of enjoyable because I had, you know, I grew up in Wheaton, which you may not realize. What? Uh, what? I know. I didn't always live out here in Iowa. Well, you know, all that, all that space that's coming out there, that's Nebraska. So, <laughs> I mean, it goes for miles and miles of Nebraska. Yeah, so. it just, um, yeah we, get, we get Nebraska dirt that blows in sometimes <laughs> on a good storm. That's, that's actually one of the worst things about my house is you can't, um, you can't really use the back door. Because of the wind, <laughs> the wind will, if you open the back door, it will and open just the front door open all the way. <laughs> and we, when my daughter was younger, she was probably like two or three years old. And we had like a little kid birthday party. We invited over some other um, families we do from our church and they had kids, you know, about the same age and had like a little kiddie pool and some stuff in the backyard. Nothing, nothing super fancy. And one little boy got ripped off to, the door. <laughs> he went to exit and he's holding the door handle the wind blows, catches it. He's hanging on the door for dear life as it blows all the way over. And like the latch that connects it to the frame yeah. snaps. <laughs> so he's just flying, hanging onto the door. Parents have to go over grab. He was okay. Don't worry. It's fine. But well, nobody um, cares. He, it was funny. <laughs> it was hilarious. I mean, and it, it totally looked like he was like Superman flying because it moved so fast. Like his legs were like kicking out behind him. He wasn't just like hanging on the door. He was flying with the door. He held on good. I mean, that's good upper arm, hand strength. Let's be honest. We've all ridden bikes when we were kids, and we watched little Billy go over the handlebars because he wasn't paying attention, and we didn't, weren't concerned with whether he was injured at first. It was awesome and funny. And it then was. we checked on if he was okay. So the little boy that did that, it was awesome and funny. Then you checked if he was okay because he probably got done and went, that was cool. Yeah. He was, like, mildly, like, what was that? Like, he, was, he was totally fine. <laughs> he was fine. Um. But yeah, I mean, the wind kids can handle things. trauma. Yeah, they're fine. They're fine. So we don't we don't really use the back door very often. <laughs> for put a tree. You could put trees there, and we have a couple of trees in the backyard. I unfortunately, I wish we would have planted them sooner. Like when we first moved right. into the house, we didn't have the money to pay, like because trees can be expensive. Yes. Um, and we didn't have the money for trees then, so we waited a while. Then we finally planted some trees. Um, I kind of wish we would have done like a line of trees along the back. Evergreens? Nice. Are you, is that what you used? Evergreens? I know kids are riveted by this evergreen. Yes. Talk. They're like, wow, tell talk. us more about your arboretum. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's in, it's in Wheaton. Uh, we, have a, we have a birch. We've got a maple and something else. Okay. So you don't no, have no a line evergreen. of, I'm, you don't a have a line guy. of windbreaker, but see, that's what you need because grow, having growing up on a farm, you put the line of evergreens or pine trees along yeah. the property line and that will cut down the wind significantly. However, on days where there, it is windy, there's a whistle and it's kind of crazy sounding. Okay. So it's like, whew, you can really hear it whipping through the trees. You're like, oh, there's a storm a coming. <laughs> Cause that's what we'd always say. We always have the wind out here though. I mean, because it's Nebraska and Iowa. It. Yeah. So I'll, you know, I'll be outside at, at school, like for bus duty at the end of the day. I'm like, oh, it's so nice out. I'll get the <laughs> sun's out, whatever. And I'll go home and I'll be in my backyard and it's just like, whoosh, just the wind because there's nothing to stop it. And I always forget. So. Well, you are also closer to the lake because the lake is warmer. So at you, time, yes. By the at time you get to Iowa, it, it, the temperature drops, the wind comes up. I mean, yeah. you're in a different you're in a different state, dude. That's why. It, it's, it's a different climate out here <laughs> of our own weather patterns and systems. Yes. Actually, the, the great thing is we can, I can see a storm coming for miles. Yes, that is true. But I have wonderful visibility. But also with that, you can see the storm coming, which that's another cool thing. Like when you could see it come rolling in and you could see the lightning. Because I remember, again, growing up on the farm, there was nothing. So you're like, Oh, here comes a storm. And I do remember, and I was, I, I remember this, and I was told this, that we could see a tornado out of the back door. And I was standing 
as a little kid out the back door watching it because I thought it was cool. Apparently, my dad had to come up because we all went to the basement. My dad had to come up and take me from the door downstairs to the basement because <laughs> I wouldn't leave the doorway because how cool it was. It was super cool. It I was get it. super cool. It's, it is still super but cool. But at least he loved you enough <laughs> to not just leave you by the door and be like, Mike, be fine. little Mikey. My little you? Mikey Pete. Oh, like the little kid on the door. That got <laughs> yes, exact same. Exact same. Same, same thing. All right. Well, I don't even know where else to go with this conversation at this point in time. Hey, welcome to Quarantine Conversations. That was it. This was a fantastic chat about... Um, blueberry muffins. And blueberry muffins and all sorts of great things. And I, I, made, I, had, I had two muffins for breakfast. Uh, the batch that I made, it only made nine. And they're not like what? gigantic. So it was kind of weird. Like, I thought it was going to make a dozen. But by the time I filled the little cups, there was only okay. nine. Okay, whatever. It, that so, doesn't matter. That doesn't matter at all. Every, I mean, everybody in the house got some muffins. <laughs> I may have another one this afternoon for a snack because it's got blueberries in it, so that makes it healthy. Right. Totally healthy. That's actually, this is the only way I will eat blueberries. If you <laughs> really? If eat blueberries plain, I would not touch them. <laughs> if you wrap it in a muffin, I, I enjoy them very much. So what you're saying is if I wet some blueberries down and just sprinkle some sugar on it, you got to like bake it and like I need a little more. <laughs> you need some breadish thing. Go with it. Yes. Okay. All right. So put it in some sort of cake yes. travel thing and you could travel and then, the then blueberries. Then I would eat the blueberries. That would okay. be just fine. But it would not work for strawberries or raspberries. No. In case of other things, I still would not eat them. No. Okay. I can understand that. Plus, I don't, I don't ever really, I've never heard of anybody going, oh, I need to get me a raspberry muffin. Could be a thing somewhere. <laughs> But Maybe. not with me. Not with me either. All right, Mr. File, you have a great day. And I Peace. hope you have some tasty snacks too. I'm going to actually go have some blueberry muffins because my wife That's made right, some. That's right, you have some too. So, yeah. All right, today's episode, blueberry muffins. <laughs> Woohoo! Have a fantastic day. You too.